go. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Matthew Putterman. I'm here with MMA Today, alongside Bellator's top featherweight contender, Emmanuel Almatador Sanchez, coming off of a first-round victory over Sam Cecilia at Bellator 198 in Chicago, Illinois. Emmanuel, how you doing today, man? It's great to see you. Pretty good, guys. Let me get my master Hanach accent. Not just kidding. Yeah, I'm just loving life. You know what I mean? It's uh, good. Finished training. You know, sorry I didn't, I didn't change or anything. But <laughs> this is the day in the life of the prize fighters. So. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Definitely. Well, of course, my name is Matthew Putterman. I've known Emmanuel for about three years now. About. And uh, just over the few past few years, I, I acquired a job in my high school. Uh, I work at Rufus Sport Mixed Martial Arts Academy. It's one of the top 10 MMA academies in the world here. And uh, it's truly a blessing. I'm truly thankful for all these gifts I'm able to do. And uh, I'm just here to share that. And uh, of course, over the years, I've seen a lot of Emmanuel's fights. And we've become very good friends over the years here. And you know, just turning my dreams into reality, like he says. And every day, just working hard to be my best and see what I can do with it. So. Of course, let's just dive into the interview now. So, Emmanuel, you're coming off of an impressive first-round victory over Sam Cecilia. How do you rate that performance? Pretty good. You know what I mean? I guess you could say 10 out of 10. But even for me, I guess 9 out of 10. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Just for myself, I, I feel like I can always finish faster, do better, be faster. You know, rewatching the fight, it's kind of like hard to... When you, when you look at it, you know what I mean? You rewatch it, it's, it's pretty quick still. But, like, I don't know. I think it's because... I, it's like so bittersweet because in the past you've seen a lot of fights go the distance and it's been a while since I finished a fight that fast so the fact that you know I got it in got it out and that was it I was like oh wow I, I don't know I guess just the fact that I trained for so long and got so ready for someone and then just put them out that fast it was just uh, you know it's, to me I guess pretty impressive you're right I guess I'm sorry to say it's pretty impressive it's pretty uh, it, it itself is just uh, outstanding, outstanding performance, you know what I mean? Uh, whether by knockout, TKO, submission, I knew I wanted to win. A lot of people were banking, and you know, I'm sure, I don't tune in too much of opinions and ratings or whatever, but a lot of people were probably banking that I, I would win by split decision, or unanimous, or majority, who knows, it's just decision, they thought I would win by that. But I went out and I took care of business first round, so I felt good to get that back in the win column like that. Definitely. Well, do you think this puts you as the number one contender to fight for the title? Of course, you fought a lot of the guys like Justin Lawrence. Uh, you finished Daniel Strauss, the former champion. Do you think this puts you in line as a next contender? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think even my last one did. You know what I mean? Uh, finishing the former two-time champion, the only men he lost to in Bellator is Pat Curran and Patricio Pickman. Yeah. You know what I mean? No one else has beat him or come close. You know, and uh, two-time champion, and the fact that he's been a uh, you know a mainstay in Bellator for so long, and the fact that he's got such a name, and probably even more. You know, fights and wins in Bellator than I have professional fights. You know, Humble are at least close to that. You know, and both Pitbull and Curran are the, the same, just like Daniel. So those guys are kind of been the poster boys for the featherweight division and have been for the past, you know, since Bellator started. Yeah. And now, you know, we got new, uh, we got new ownership. Bellator's got a whole new face, a whole new outlook, and I love it. And I love being a part of Bellator. I love what they're doing. And I think it's time for the Matadors era. It's time for a new king. To, to reign supreme, and uh, I want to go out and take them all out. I love it. Well, they already so Bellator booked the rematch between Daniel Weichel and Pitbull in July. Uh, they'll be fighting in Rome too. Are you gonna stay ready just in case you want to jump in? If Daniel would knock on wood, if you would get injured, would, are you gonna be ready to step in the face, Pitbull? Yeah, Bellator? absolutely. You know, you see me training right now. You know, what I mean, we run this morning, and uh, you know, continue to train throughout the day. So this is my this is my my job, my livelihood. You know, what I mean, they say when you when you do something that you love and it's your passion, you never work a day in your life. So, you know, it is physically taxing, it's, it's brutal, it's grimy, it's hard on the body and the mind, you know, but I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. It's much better than doing anything else that I was doing in my life before or that I needed to do to provide for myself. And this is what provides for me. This is my livelihood, my financial freedom, my everything relies on this. So. Uh, yeah, all my eggs will be in this one basket to be able to go out and do great things, be a be a champion, and be a legend. Definitely. Well, there's a lot of the guys in your division, like Aaron Pico, just had another first round knockout. Uh, of course, you got a lot of those other guys. What do you like AJ McKee as well? Do you think they're on your radar? I know they're younger guys, they're up and coming. Uh, even James Gallagher too, coming off of another submission victory over Vito uh, Machida's little brother as well. Do you think they're on your radar at all, or do you think they're years behind? You? Uh, I believe years behind me, you know what I mean? This coming year, right now, at the end of October, 
I mean, at, at, at October, it'll be my four year tenure, you know what I mean, being with Bellator. And none of those guys, I'm not knocking them, you know what I mean? They're great, they've won, they're undefeated or whatever, doing other things, you know what I mean? Good for them, you know, I'll, I'm watching, whatever, like they're doing good. But it, to me, it's impressive, great, you're finishing, whatever, you know what I mean? But in my third fight in Bellator, I, fa I faced Pat Curran. You know, my, my third fight, my third fight in Bellator, fa facing Pat Curran on short notice, two week notice. Now, out of any of those kids, you know, I'll just say kids because I'll say more experienced as an adult in my fight life, maybe not as, you know, age wise, but my fight life, my fight mileage, none of, none of these guys, you know, have done what I've done face by face. There's only one guy that I'll give credit and like, you know, applaud is Henry Corrales, you know what I mean, making his debut against the former champion Daniel Strauss. And then taking Pitbull on short notice, yeah. you know, that, him too was like two week notice, and you know, and then facing myself, and now he's faced other tough, tough, top guys. But uh, you know, anyone else? No, man. You know, like really, let's just put it as that: who has faced the former two time champion Pat Curran on two weeks notice? You know what I mean? And then taking another one, in, uh, you know, on short notice right after that against Henry, against Justin, and then. Uh, top UFC fighters, you know what I mean? Guys that have been successful in the UFC, obviously they get, you know, got let go, but they still found success and were still a name, you know, whether it be from the Ultimate Fighter or at the time when they were there, you know what I mean? They were doing good in the UFC. So, guys from the UFC, guys, Bellator mainstays, former champions, top contenders, who else has faced, who I've faced, beat, who I've beat, done what I've done? No one. So, yeah, you know what I mean? None of those guys are on my radar until they face someone like Curran or Strauss or Pitbull or Vichel. Uh, the, the names go on and on and on, the, you know, I mean, numbers and rankings and wins and whatever, it doesn't matter, but those big top dogs, you know what I mean, is what matters, so until they face someone like that, then we can talk, you know, and then we're like, all right, you face me, but other than that, no, we're not even, we're in two different galaxies right now, completely different dimensions. Definitely, well, as you saw the UFC, there's a big announcement, especially with Yair Rodriguez, uh, of course, he turned down two fights, one against Ricardo Lamas, and then one against Sabi. And they released him. Do you think if Bellator would sign Yair Rodriguez, would you like to fight him, or would you like would you like to welcome him into the Bellator, or would you like to fight for the title first, then maybe defend your title against Yair? You know, I had another interview the other day. Someone asked me that too, and you know, respectfully, I think you know I'm pretty smart, and I agree with him. He uh, he said I believe he needs to fight another top contender before he gets to face you. So that's true, though. You know what I mean? Well, okay, yeah, you get Lawrence Larkin, of course. He was a former Strike Force guy, though. So, you know, he's been cool with Coker before and, you know, made his name in Strike Force before he got to the UFC. And now he went back to Bellator, which Coker owns now. And, you know, they gave him a title shot right away, but it, it, you know, it made sense. And then he's fighting top guys, you know what I mean? Which still makes sense, which a lot of guys did get, you know, like Rory coming over as well, too. And, you know, all these other top guys. But I believe, uh, you know, he's coming off a loss. So yeah, he does need to get a win first before he can face someone like myself. And right now, I'm only eyeing the title picture. Would it be a great fight? Yes. Would we? Would I love to do it in like Texas or Mexico? Of course. You know what I mean? It'd be yeah. huge for either for both of us. You know what I mean? In all of Latin and America. You know what I mean? For all over the world, not just in Bellator, but for MMA in general, all over the world. Hell of an exciting fight. And I'm sure he'd be down with it too. I've actually trained with him. I like him. He's a cool guy. And I, I like to think he thinks I'm cool too. <laughs> but. You know what I mean? But there obviously no animosity or no hunger to want to go out and fight sure. here. But if he gets signed, obviously that's someone in my division. Someone, you know, we're dogs in the cage, you know what yeah. I mean? That's another dog in another cage. We're staying across from each other. If he did, does end up signing with Bellator. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Only time will tell. But first things first is uh, I'm eyeing the winner of Pitbull and Bichol. It's the only guys on my radar. Definitely. Well, thank you. Thank you for you brought that up. Who do you have between Daniel Weichel and Pitbull? Obviously, you fought Daniel Weichel before. It was a close split decision loss to him. What could you have done better in that fight to maybe persuade the judges and you of winning that fight? Knocked him out. That's what I've been doing. Knocked him out, finished the fight. That's how, you, that's how you convince the judges and the people. I mean, am I right? Let's just be real. You know, uh, looking back on it, man, even speaking to myself in my own mind, anytime I think about it, I'm glad I lost that fight, you know what I mean? Because it did teach me a lot. Because, number one, I didn't want to set the record for most split decisions in MMA, number one. Number two, when I started to hear the scores and I heard split decision, I'm like, what is going on right now? I'm like, I felt I won all three rounds. But I, you know, still had my hand raised and then when I he got called him the winner, I was just like, well, you know what I mean? At first, yes, I was pissed and I'm like, damn, I felt I won. 
you know, all three rounds, but I was like, you know what, looking back on it now, I'm thankful for it because it turned me into a monster. You know, it really has. It really unleashed the beast. I've been the smartest I've ever been. I'm more wiser. And I've, you know, before the old me, early on in Bellator, you know, you see good wins, but then you did see a lot of, kind of like brawling. Or, you know, you did see a lot of blood from me. You know, a lot of blood and guts. Fighting with my balls, to be honest. You know what I mean? Just going out there and wanting to kill them. Now you just see a much more uh, technical aggression. You know what I mean? Taking no punishment. Um, being a smart fighter, no headbutts, no cuts, and uh, loving life, man. You know what I mean? It's just uh, after that, you know what I mean? Having a fight with no stitches, that feels great. You know, and you want to stay pretty and have a long career and not lose brain cells, not getting concussed, all that stuff. You know, but it's the nature of the sport. You know, it's the nature of fighting. That's the point of it. So I'm not afraid of it. I'm running towards it. I really am running towards it. So I know like, I can't do it by going backwards. It's all going forwards and knowing that I can still kill them all, I can really can, I can still put them all out, finish them, whether by submission, knockout, TKO, or cut them and then get the fights out, whatever, just beat their ass, you know what I mean? But uh, just absolutely dominate and make them quit, get the finish, you know? So and we've seen that twice now in the last two outings, and just we've just seen pure dominance, man, so it, it did make me grow a lot, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, it made me grow a lot, and who do I have? You know, we've, we've, I've pretty much faced everyone in the division right now, except for the young guys that you named. So, I would love to fight Pitbull, of course. I think that day will come, but if Daniel does come out on top, I would love to take the belt from him that rightfully belongs to me. After, you know what I mean, if he goes out and wins it, it rightfully belongs to me, and now I gotta go out and earn it. You know what I mean? I gotta go out and whip that ass again, absolutely dominate, put him away this time, and bring that belt right back here, right back home. So, you know, if Pitbull wins though, all right. It's a guy that I have never faced before. So either one makes for a, a marketable, good promotional fight. Yeah, are you hoping that Daniel wins just in case, because of course they'd be one and one. Are you afraid that Bellator would give Pitbull the trilogy? Are you, are you scared of that? Or? I think uh, no, because Pitbull also, remember, he broke his leg against Ben Henderson. And then yeah. he, got a, he got a title shot right away against yeah. Strauss once, once his leg got healed. So. No, I think uh, whether he wants to go back up to 55 or whether he want, he, he's got to face someone else, you know what I mean? I think it'd be good. I, I've seen on the internet uh, him and Pat Curran, you know, want to rematch with each other. So why don't you yeah. settle that out, you know, because they're one and one with each other. So why don't they settle that out? Because obviously the ones who have faced each other the most is Curran and Strauss and Curran and... Uh, uh, no, who's the other one? No, oh, yeah, just Curran and Strauss. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, wow. Curran and Pitbull are only one and one with each other, so they can settle that score. Pitbull and Vitro, you know, I think Bellator in general and all in MMA, excuse me, between all these trilogies and all that stuff like that, no one wants to see it anymore, you know what I mean? Even me, okay, I lost to Pat Curran, but unless it's for the title, does it make sense to have a rematch? Personally, for me, I don't think so. I, unless it's for the title, to me, that's going to be a title defense. That's how I feel. If he, you know, goes on and continues to, if he waits for a title shot or he wins another one, then he gets another one, you know what I mean? But he's only won two fights since he beat me. I've won five. You know what I mean? So I've been way more consistently and active, yeah. you know? Uh, I've won more than five, excuse me. I've won way more. And that was back in 2015 when we faced each other. So that was more than three years ago, you know? Literally, actually coming in June, that was more than three years ago when I faced him, you know? And Pit, uh, me and uh, Vichel, excuse me, that, that was the only one that makes sense if he does win because, you know, he has a robbery against me. Even Rich Chow said, uh, I had you win that fight, you know what I mean? But he did give me credit because he said that guy could be the champion right now, you know, because it was a close fight between yeah. him and Pitbull in the first round, but Pitbull rightfully so won. So I hope one of these guys, you know what I mean, gets a finish, it's dominant, no more rematches, you know what I mean? I yeah. think, like I said earlier, I just got sidetracked. A lot of people are tired of rematches, and trilogies, and yeah, four yeah. fight deal, you know what I mean? We've seen Pitbull and Strauss fight four times. Even Pitbull's older brother, the older, older Pitbull, was like, man, Sanchez, I hope you win. I do not want to see my brother fight Strauss again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, would, 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 seriously, a Pitbull Strauss five? Come on, you know what I mean? Or, uh, you know, uh, Strauss and Pitbull against Strauss and Kern again, you know what I mean? It's like, it's too much. Those, I'm sure those guys are tired of fighting each other, you know? So, you know, I uh, would really love to just uh, title defense against Kern and take it from Daniel Baichel. If not, all right, first time facing uh, Pitbull, if Pitbull comes out victorious, so, you know, I think it'd be a great fight against either one of them, but I'll be ready for either one of them. Definitely. Well, let's talk about a little bit of your evolution of your game. Obviously, I've, I've known him the past three years, and I've seen a lot of evolution, obviously, in like Marcos Galvao and 
you keep making like leaps and bounds, especially when you fought Daniel Strauss too. What are the things that you're doing in the gym that's helping you get to that level? Like, what are the things you're working on to help you get your game up even higher each and every day? It's kind of crazy to say, but I think it's even more mental, you know? Because yeah. like before, when I was younger, honestly, going thinking back to like 2015, with those fights with Curran or Corrales or Justin Lawrence, it, you know, they were very close. Yeah. And you look, you can look on Sure Dog, all those fights were very close. They were like a month or two apart. I felt like I was in the Bellator tournament. <laughs> like back in then, like I was seriously, I was fighting a month and a half, a month apart. And those fights were very close. And then Daniel Pineda as well. All those fights were very close. And so there was like no break, no gap. So a lot of it was just fight. You know what I mean? My mindset was just like, all right, I got to fight. Defend takedowns, punches and kicks, let's do this. You know what I mean? Same thing with the next guy. Defend yeah, yeah, takedowns, yeah. take him down, punches <laughs> and kicks, let's do this. Knock this guy out, try to knock this guy out. Try, you know what I mean? That's what I did. I really did. I tried to knock everyone out, submit everyone. And okay, it didn't go my way. A lot of them was decisions, but they were really close. And like I said, you saw a lot of blood and guts and balls and brawling, a little bit mentality. You just wanted to throw down, just hungry to throw down. And now it's just been more mental, you know what I mean? With a lot of time in between fights, it's been all right. It, you know, and even in training, it didn't need to be just sparring. It didn't need to be go hard, go hard, go hard. It was a sporadic and more mental of like, all right, I gotta watch myself in the mirror more. I gotta run more. I gotta jump more. I gotta shadow box more. I gotta, I gotta be more technical with the jab. I gotta be more technical with the jab cross. I gotta do more reps, reps on reps on reps. Because before it would be like, all right, I did my 10 or I did my 100. All right, I'm good. Now let's do 100 kicks. Now think of the next one. When really it'd be like, man, let's stay on this jab cross. I'm doing this the whole month and then that's it. I'm gonna do a thousand jab crosses a day. You know, like Bruce Lee would say. You know, the 10,000 rule, you know, fearing the guy who uh, did the one move 10,000 times instead of 10,000 moves, yeah. you know what I mean? And that's the same way I feel with my jiu-jitsu, you know what I mean? Just focus on the one submission or one sweep over and over and over again from every different angle, every position against any partner, and that's what makes you get better. You know? It doesn't matter what size, what whatever they are, I'm able to dictate my game plan, I'm able to stick to it, and I'm able to just like fight and flow like water, you know, there's no hesitation, there's no doubt, it's just muscle memory, and I'm just out there doing my thing, you know? And it, I think it was really just all mental. You gotta clear your mind of can't. Clear my mind of like, oh, my knee hurts, my back hurts, my this hurts, my this, oh, my hand, oh, like this, you know what I mean? So many excuses, oh, I'm tired, oh, this. Nah, it's just, go out there, just get it done. Don't listen to my body, don't listen to this. Of course, I got bills to pay, of course. I got to take care of my dog, I gotta take care of this, I gotta take care of that. All that stresses and all that other stuff doesn't matter. It's time to train, the hard hat's on, time to go to work, that's it. Thing at work, once I leave here, all right, we'll focus on everything else after yeah. that. But well, first things first is take care of what I need to take care of being a martial artist. Well, before it was like, all right, oh, uh, I'm a fighter, so I gotta do fight stuff, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Martial artist, calm the, mo calm the mind, calm the body, flow, get it right, and it'll also be more of an athlete. Because I'm not naturally fast, I'm not naturally strong, I, I, I am blessed with a great gas tank, but I, I don't have any natural athleticism. So by making myself faster, making myself stronger mentally, doing those things for when I do it in wrestling or do it in jujitsu, do it in striking, it's showing the cards. Definitely. So it's definitely, it's all mental. Yeah, definitely, man. Well, this is Matt with MMA Today. I'm gonna be getting a lot of interviews over the next few weeks here. I'm gonna probably do one per week. And uh, thank you, Emmanuel. Would you like to shout out any sponsors, anything like that? Rufus Sport Mixed Martial Arts Academy right here. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, Combat Corner's not around, but you can see it, Combat Corner. <laughs> Uh, shout out to all the people, Iowa Bison, Freshman, Pokey, CryoFit, Milwaukee, Brookfield, Chiropractic. Uh, thank you guys so much, the Wisconsin Athletic Club. We appreciate you guys very much. McBride Mats, this whole gym is covered in McBride Mats and Combat Corner gear. You guys supply the best gear. And it takes a village to raise a fighter. You know, I couldn't do, do it with any, without any of you guys. You know what I mean? It really provides for me the grip, mouth guards, diamond in the makeups. It really taken care of me. With every little thing that I got, I got nothing to worry about. So that's really great. Because a lot of people in MMA, sponsors think it's all just about, oh, Bud Light, give me money. This guy, give me money. Monster, give me money. Money, money, money. Which is great if that supplies your training needs. But if your training needs are already supplied, combat corner, grip, mouth guards, dominating, okay, food, all, whatever, and then I'm like, all right. Then I get to keep my fight purse so don't need to spend it on anything else. I can just take care of whatever else I need, you know? So it's, I'm very great and very thankful that I have Duke Rufus, Scott Cushman, Joe Nichols, Justin Lemke, my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu coach, Daniel Bonnelay, and other great guys here to help me out. Top level guys in the UFC, Bellator, World Series, wherever, you know what I mean? Guys fighting all over the world. My man Mike Biggie Rose fighting out there in uh, ACB, yeah. going out there in Nottingham, England. I'm so proud and happy for him. And uh, he's going to come back to Torius, doing it for the USA. So, and all my guys coming up right now, too. You know what I mean? Going into LFA, going into the Contender Series, going into uh, what, what, 
what other FA that we got? The LFC, the AFC, KFC, UFC, BFC, whatever, you know what I mean? So all these guys shining all over at the top right there, I really appreciate them. These guys right here, they're riding with me every single day, and we're making it to the top together. So appreciate them and my team. Definitely. Well, this is Matt signing out with MMA Today. Thank you so much, and tune in next week for another interview, and uh, we'll get it going for sure. Have a great day.